Time now to take a look at what's making headlines in the international press. Hexi Mars Belkin is back with us in studio. Hexi, uh, Trump once again making a lot of headlines, this time because of his maiden speech at that UN General Assembly. Absolutely. And let's start by taking a look at some of the headlines that speech generated. A British paper, The Eye, has opted for a headline announcing that Trump is threatening to obliterate North Korea if the country threatens the US or its allies. A Belgian paper, Le Soir, also puts it rather well. Uh, Trump's fighting talk at the UN reads that headline. The US president unleashes his bellicose rhetoric on the UN. Now, American papers, unsurprisingly, have been eagerly dissecting that speech. For the New York Times, Trump's insistence on the importance of sovereignty as the guiding principle um, of, uh, of affairs between nations, as opposed to cooperation, that is, uh, definitely sets him apart from his forebears, who, we're reminded, set up the UN post-World War II uh, precisely to work through global problems as one. But this piece um, is most concerned with what it calls Trump's strikingly selective definition of sovereignty. Iran, Venezuela and North Korea were singled out for threats and insults, while international players like Russia, notably, got off pretty much scot-free uh, after annexing... a. Uh, Crimea for its uh, neighbour Ukraine, of course. Now, the Washington Post is focusing on another apparent uh, contradiction or inconsistency in Trump's speech. We read, we read here that Trump seemed unable to decide whether the US uh, should take a back seat regarding American involvement in other countries' business, or whether the US should in fact act as the world's policeman. Now, this piece uh, points out that in paying homage to America's track record of financial generosity on the world stage, Trump actually referenced US-funded uh, global health programmes that his administration's recent budget seeks to cut. Now, as the paper's uh, cartoon illustrates uh, rather nicely, uh, Trump has all the grandstanding of a Roman emperor, uh, all the bravado of a peacock, but he's fundamentally blind to his own inconsistencies. His hat there pulled firmly over his eyes, as you can see there. Uh, Hexi is saying there he took, uh, you know, sharp words for Venezuela, North Korea in particular, and Iran. You've been taking a look at how the papers in Iran have been reacting. Yeah, so Trump once again announced that the Iran nuclear deal, struck, of course, under the Obama administration, was an embarrassment for the US. And the Iranian press isn't taking any of it. This piece in the pro-government uh, Tehran Times shows Iranian President uh, Hassan Rouhani shaking hands with French President Emmanuel Macron. Underneath, we read that Macron is determined to expand relations with Iran and that American attempts to renegotiate that uh, nuclear deal are meaningless, quoting Macron there. Now, Rouhani himself is quoted as saying that attempts to undermine the deal uh, bear a dangerous message to the world that problems cannot be solved through diplomacy. Now, as reported in the state-run uh, Iran Daily, meanwhile, the country's foreign minister goes one step further. We read here that Mohammad Javad, uh, Javad Sarif tweeted that Trump's ignorant hate speech belongs in medieval times and is unworthy of a reply. Although, of course, some people would suggest that that itself was a form of reply. Uh, and now, Hexi, there was a lot of interest yesterday, on Tuesday, for that long-awaited speech from Burmese leader Aung San Suu Kyi. A lot of reactions to that speech in today's papers. Quite different analysis from papers across the world. Yeah, so this piece in a British centre-right paper, The Times, uh, talks of Suu Kyi's refusal to accept evidence of ethnic cleansing of the Rohingya community uh, as she insisted that there had been no violence in the west of the country for two weeks. That, of course, despite a mountain of evidence of testimony from aid agencies, from the UN, from refugees um, and journalists on the ground. Now, India has uh, recently voiced support for Aung San Suu Kyi, which is why this piece in The Telegraph uh, of India grabbed my attention. Headlined, uh, Suu Kyi turns army parrot. This piece uh, compares what the UN has called a textbook example of ethnic cleansing with Suu Kyi's non-committal assertions that her government does feel deeply for the suffering of those caught up in the conflict. Uh, very finally and quickly, Hexi, there's uh, some feminist battles apparently playing out in the press across Europe today. 
They absolutely are. So um, going back just uh, for a second to the Times of London, uh, they're reporting that new plans by the French government to crack down on macho culture could see men uh, facing prosecution for persistent unwanted sexual advances, including wolf whistling. Now, we read uh, that Belgium, Portugal and the UK already have similar legislation and that as it stands in France, there is a legislative void between consensual seduction, which is legal, and sexual assault, which, of course, is an offence. Now, meanwhile, in the Netherlands, women are being called on to descend on urinals this Friday. Why? Well, a young woman has just been fined €150 Euros for urinating in the street due, she says, to an appalling lack of public toilet facilities for women. The judge in question said that she simply should have used urinals. So I think the, uh, the message here is that that is simply unworkable. And uh, <laughs> we'll soon see Friday women descending on urinals across Holland. OK, actually, Myers, welcome with the International Press Review. Thanks indeed for that time for a quick break now. But we're back in just a few moments, so don't go anywhere.